let's talk about environmental modeling. This is actually an introduction to environmental modeling. So what do we mean by environmental modeling? When modeling comes into your mind, when modeling comes into your mind, I'm quite sure it would look like somebody posing or somebody is taking a picture of a certain person with a camera. Maybe. But actually, environmental modeling looks like this. So in environmental modeling or in modeling, we tend to have four levels. We have lump model in which we only have one parameter that would map out a certain area or a certain place or a certain ecosystem. When we, when we say lump model, it simplifies a description of a certain behavior or a certain parameter of a spatially distributed physical system into a topology consisting of a certain discrete entities that approximates a certain behavior or a certain features or parameter of a distributed system under certain assumptions. In short, if you have a certain area that you are going to map out and it just focuses on one parameter, other spatial attributes will be lumped into a one feature or into a one parameter. That's lump model. You are lumping the whole area and putting assumption on other discrete data. The next level would be the semi-distributed model. So in this kind of model, it's actually a variation of lump model and sometimes called as pseudo-distributed approach in which in this approach, as you can see, the basin is broken down into sub-basins and it considers one, two, or more parameters. Like, as you can see here, there are three parameters in this semi-distributed model. The semi-distributed model are usually used in a runoff model or in a runoff map in which sometimes um, they use it to estimate stream flows of sub-basins. The next level is the fully distributed model. As you can see, in the basin, it is actually distributed or it is actually subdivided into a cell. So in fully distributed models, it is capturing spatial distribution of input variables. So in fully distributed model, we can actually put or we can actually consider a lot of parameters. We can consider physical attributes or physical parameters like land use, soil, elevation, and others. At the same time, we can also consider meteorological conditions or meteorological parameters like temperature, rainfall, and other parameters. So that's fully distributed model. So by definition, environmental modeling deals with the representation of processes that occurs in the real world, considering space and time. So environmental modeling, by definition, deals with the representation of processes that occurs in the real world that considers space and time. We can use this environmental modeling in pure research, and at the same time, we can improve our understanding of environmental systems or for providing interdisciplinary analysis that would really help us and inform us in decision making and environmental policies. So when we say environmental modeling, there are actually a lot of things to consider. In the previous slide that I showed you, in which we have the lump model, the semi-distributed model, and the fully distributed model, these are the topics and disciplines that we have to consider. Numerical model generation, geostatistics, data analysis, forecasting, model testing and predictions. We also have conceptualization and model parameterization, calibration and validation of numerical models, scenario development, and simulation. If we are going to think all of these topics and all of these disciplines or specializations, it's actually like, it's actually a little complex, right? But actually, it's not. But actually, informatical modeling is not. So let me give you a little motivation in which why do we really have to study environmental modeling? Not only that it is part of the curriculum, but what's actually the edge of knowing environmental modeling? Of course, let me tell you, it would increase employability. 
Let me give you an example. It is an edge if you know how to create a topographic map. Also, it is an edge if the job description is asking that you should know how to use QGIS or GIS or ArcView and how to prepare a map, um, how to analyze data from the map, and of course, how to use modeling and how to prepare a report out from that. If somebody is applying with a master's degree and you with a college degree, but the job description is asking you that you should know QGIS or you should know how to create maps using GIS, I think that would be a great edge. Also, if somebody is trying to find um, who know how to use QGIS type mapping and geostatistical methodologies, then that would really be the end. Alright, let's go now to applied methods in environmental science. There is actually three main categories in applied methods in environmental science that focuses on environmental modeling. So first off is environmental statistics or statistical programming. Second is environmental geographic information systems. And the third one is environmental modeling. So these three topics has subcategories in which we will be hopefully be able to discuss in our environmental modeling and monitoring class. So for environmental statistics, we will be discussing environmental data. There will also be an introduction to statistics and time series analysis. So this is actually just a basic statistics with time series. It will be easy for sure. At the same time, we will be having or we will be discussing spatial statistics or geostatistics and of course data analysis and presentation tools. Under the second category or the environmental geographic information systems, we will be discussing spatial data type and structures. We will also be discussing spatial databases and of course how to use them. Of course, we will be discussing grid-based digital terrain analysis and of course JS for hydrological modeling. And the third category is environmental modeling. Uh, we will be discussing modeling in environmental context, model types and model building, model procedures, calibration and validation techniques, uh, scenario techniques, and of course, model uncertainties. Let me give you an example of, of a map in which this is actually the application of environmental modeling. So this is digital surface models. So we have types of digital surface models. We have DEM or the digital elevation models. DEM, it's actually a 3D computer graphics that, that represents an elevation data to represent terrain. DEM commonly are of a planet, for example, Earth, or we can also do Mars, Moon, or an asteroid. So when we say global DEM or global digital elevation model, um, it actually refers to a discrete global grid. So that's DEM. Next type of digital surface models is DSM or digital surface model. When we say DSM, it actually represents MSL or the mean sea level, which represents elevation of the reflective surface of the earth, elevation of the reflective surface of trees, buildings, and other features above the rare earth. So digital surface models, it represents the earth surface and includes all subjects on it. Again, it represents the Earth's surface and all of the subjects on it. All of the objects on it. The last one is actually DTM or the Digital Terrain Model. It's actually a DEM in which terrain data has been further enhanced into break lines that would create a better accuracy as it contains additional information when it comes to defining terrain in areas with a LiDAR data and areas where LiDAR data alone is unable to do the job effectively. That's DTM. But basically in the subject, we will focus more on the DM or digital elevation. Next example is a geographical data analysis. As you can see, this is actually the application of spatial interpolation in the monthly rainfall of a certain country. In this, in this data or in this map, it actually shows the rainfall data in the southern part of Italy. So, spatial interpolation is actually uh, the process of using points with known values to estimate the values at other unknown parts. For example, in this map, make a precipitation or rainfall map of your country 
or our country, we have to find enough data, we have to find enough evenly spread weather stations to cover the entire regions. So that's spatial interpolation. We can interpolate the other areas with a certain calculation of rainfall if it does not have any rainfall data. Next example would be numerical modeling. So in this case, they are actually analyzing the shoreline modification or natural changes by using numerical model. So when we say numerical model, it's actually a mathematical model that use some sort of numerical time-stepping procedure to obtain the model's behavior over time. So the mathematical solution is represented by a generated table and or graph. In this case, as you can see in the example. Numerical modeling is actually a very powerful modeling method of visualizing the dynamic behavior of a physical system. That's the very good use of numerical modeling into using it in a physical system. Alright, so that is the introduction to modeling.